If you're not building muscle, this is probably why. What do you guys think? What if you're not reason? building muscle, this is probably uh, not you're enough not protein. You're not lifting heavy. Ooh. Ooh, you guys are getting there, right? I, the, the first getting there? One, we're not there. No, I mean, that was one of them. Two bangers right there. It was. Know. So I'll start with the most, uh, with one of the most uh, common ones, uh, which is you're just not following good workout programming. Um, most workouts out there are terrible. It's terribly written. Either they over apply intensity or under apply volume or over apply volume or they're not yeah, doing the right It's wasted right. energy, whatever you're Such doing. Such a shameless plug by you. It, no. <laughs> you just conveniently happen to sell programs. Yeah, we do. That's, a, <laughs> that's our thing. It is. <laughs> oh, by the way, yeah. we have excellent programming. Yeah. Hey, but okay. <laughs> Be honest. No more joking. Like yeah. most workout, like most workout programs, when it comes to strength training, I would say the powerlifting, weightlifting uh -huh. category, they're all typically good. Yeah, because you have to deliver. Hundred percent. But all the like fitness programming, it's like, it's there's no rhyme or reason. The exercises could be it's make it's, some it's getting better. At least I feel that way in the last ten years. Uh, you know, and uh, I like to take some credit mm. for influencing the market. I think that the the cream is rising to the top. Mm -hmm. More and more people are becoming privy to the importance of it. Mm -hmm. uh, the 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 average consumer is smarter today than they were 15, 20 years ago. So I do think it's getting better uh, because I, I remember when we entered the space, it felt like it was like low hanging fruit. Oh, like, yeah. dude, let's oh, just man. easily help these people out because the at that time and those that know the origin story know that like uh you know because we get this gets asked all the time like you know did you guys know that you could build something that big or this or that and it's like well you know when we looked at the leader in the space when it came to program sales online it was Beachbody, yeah and they're they were a four billion dollar company at that time and so our attitude was if we can go out and provide more free valuable information to people to garner just a fraction of the attention of the people that are out there wasting their money on that. And then we write a, a program that we know is far superior because we've seen all the programming, then we've got a business. Yeah. We don't need to go, you know, be as good as marketers or have as big of a budget to spend on. Mm -hmm. Like we didn't need to. We just knew that if we went out and helped enough people and that we could write programs that were far more effective and we just needed to convince a very small percentage of those people we could help them. There's a lot of misunderstanding around programming, I think from the average person, where when when, a, when the average person looks at programming to them, it's like, is that a leg exercise? Is there a back exercise? Okay, then I got everything I need type of deal. And they'll judge workouts based on the perceived challenge or, or difficulty. Um, but programming is actually very complex. Like the best strength and conditioning coaches are the best because they understand workout programming. And there's a lot of, uh, and there, it's called programming for a reason. There's a lot of um, variables that you have to account for. Of course, there's reps and sets and exercises. Then there's intensity, then there's tempo. And then there's how you put them together in a workout, how the workouts each day line up with each other, how each week lines up with each other, how each month works with each other and you have to go you have to look forward and back to ensure that it's all pieced Whoa. together properly that it's going to promote the adaptation you're looking for it's actually quite complex and because of its complexity there's not a lot of good programming out there yeah. um go ahead oh not to mention um you know considering the avatar the person the demographic that you're even uh trying to place uh, in front of this programming we alter that based upon how they're going to potentially respond to yes. this because of experience of us actually working with that demographic versus a lot of these other programs out there that have proven this just to themselves for the most part. Yeah. Okay. So programming number one, yes. cause that's the, obviously you have to have that down. So we have the programming. Second one I think is, is protein. Yeah. Yeah. I got that. Okay. Cause yeah. that's to me, uh, I mean, I, uh, to this day, like I, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised how many people don't kind of go there first to solve their plateau or uh or, or think that so many people think they eat a lot of a protein because because there's some protein in their yeah, meal or, or yeah. even every meal right they're like every meal i have i have a, a big piece of meat or i have protein and they, and they think it's enough and more often than not when you actually start to track not only are you uh like eating probably less than it is optimal for building muscle and building your metabolism um but you're probably very inconsistent with it at best yeah. because even if you have let's say you did have the day you decided to track because you're aware of it and you're and you're trying to hit protein 
you actually have a decent day. But then the very next day, you run back a 50-gram day. And with protein, it's not like carbs and fat and calories, where you look at the week and you go like, oh, I averaged 2,500 calories a day, and my body burns 3,000, so therefore I'm in a 500-calorie deficit. With protein, you miss a day of protein, you lose out. You lose out on the day. You don't store protein. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a, oh, I ate 500 on one day, and then these other days I only ate 50, therefore I have an average of, oh, Mm. I I average out fine. No, it's like you might have had one good day, but then if you run that with two bad days in a row, even if that one day was (coughs) really high, those two bad days are enough for you to to regress in the department of building muscle or not build muscle at all because you're not giving it what it needs. Well, there's there's a reason why protein makes such a big difference. Number one, all things the same and everything being appropriate, it will probably contribute to uh, 25%, um, if you look at all the data, improvement in muscle gains. That's a lot. That's That's a big percentage difference going from eating a low protein to eating what is considered high protein. By the way, high protein is around or close to about a gram of protein per pound of uh, body weight or target body weight. So that's a big difference. But then on top of that, low protein also affects recovery, right? So a workout that might be kind of borderline for you so you can adapt and recover from it and it's hard, now becomes overtraining. So you didn't just lose a quarter of the gains, you lost all the gains because you're overtrained now because you're not eating enough protein. So protein is very impactful for your ability to build muscle and uh, not hitting protein targets. You're at the least going to take away a good quarter, a good 25% of your gains. And then lastly, you're not eating enough calories. There are times, this isn't super common, but there are times when people are following a good workout, they're hitting the protein targets, but their calories are way too damn low. And you need extra calories. You need that. Otherwise, all that protein is going to go to other things. Um, and you'll get leaner, but you're not going to gain muscle if, you're, if your calories aren't high enough. You have to have an excess of calories to add extra tissue and, on your body. And that, um, that could be a moving target because, what, especially for like the hard gainer who already thinks they have a fast metabolism, already feels like they have a hard time getting enough calories. And then they actually do build a couple pounds of, of, of muscle and now their metabolism is faster. So it's like this moving target of like, okay, good, man, I just got to get to that 3,000 calories a day to build. And then you're like, oh man, I'm hitting that consistently. And then you add a couple pounds of muscle. Now all of a sudden yeah. your body needs more calories to keep doing that or to even sustain that. And so it, it's it gets challenging. I mean, I, for me, I remember that this was like, when I think back to like... Uh, you know, my pursuit of bodybuilding, you know, the goal is in the off season to put on as much muscle as you possibly can. And the limiting factor for me always came to like, I just couldn't eat to to keep up with it. The metabolism got to a point where like, I had so much muscle mass on, from, on my frame for my appetite, for what I'm used to, uh, that I had to eat 5,000 calories a day. And that was, to, that was just to maintain this big physique. It was like, if I wanted to go to the next level, it's like, I want to get to like 5,500. Like, I don't know if I could do that. Did you really have to get up to 5,000? 5,000. Oh, 5,000 5, calories a day would maintain me. But remember, I'm- That's 5,000 calorie meals. Yeah. So th- th- you got to think too, at, that's, that, that's at this work. point, you know, I'm, I'm training hard, um, I've got you've already got two, a lot of lean body mass. I've got over 205 pounds of lean body mass on me. So I've got 205 pounds of muscle and I'm training on a regular basis like that. I mean my metabolism was just flying. I mean flying. And so yeah, no, if I wanted to just to maintain that, I needed to stay around that 4500 to 5000 yeah. range. And if I wanted to grow, I was going to have to and it's you, just too much. You know where you see this quite often, um the not enough calories combined with the not enough protein, um young men I, 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 this is very common, especially with like teenage or guys in their early 20s. They're just not eating enough. You know, that, that, that kind of lean, wiry dude that's trying to pack on muscle. And because they eat the occasional fast food meal or whatever, like, no, I'm getting enough calories. Like, no, dude, you're not eating nearly enough. I remember as, as a kid, as a teenager, I started working out young. But I remember when I was 16, I want to say, I actually made a really like measured conscious effort to eating more calories. And uh, I combined that also with better programming that I started involving barbell squats and deadlifts. Mm-hmm. And then I gained something like almost like 15 pounds 
over the summer. Yeah. I mean, I got stretch marks on my legs, yeah. my shoulder, just from that, from the food, you know? It was oh, yeah. I, I remember going through that, and it's you think you're eating a lot, but, like, because my activity increased so much, it was always just, like, keeping yeah. me exactly what I was for years until I decided I'm going to make an attempt at, like, really training myself to eat more, and I was just, like, eating more shakes on top of what I was already doing, and then I finally, you know, started to pack it on. But it took, it took a lot of, like, drudgery to get there. And then you add... You know, when it comes to building muscle and or building or losing body fat, it's such a slow process that not only do you have to do those things, but then you have to do those things consistently day in and day out for a long period of time to see anything substantial. Like, you know, every day that you you lock in and you hit these numbers, uh, protein and your calorie targets, like let's say your goal is to build – Every day you do that, in, in addition to good programming, you're you're incrementally building, but it's really slow. Mm -hmm. And it takes like weeks on weeks and weeks of discipline, of consistency to see a little bit of a return. And then, then you got to do that again to see a little bit more. And then in the context of six months, when you look back at all the, then you, then you can see like, oh, wow, I've made some serious progress. But a lot of people, they just don't have the stomach to, to stick with it long enough to really reap the the maximal benefits from it i think the most encouraging thing for people is to know that it actually gets easier the the more you've done it the more muscle you've built the more times you've built muscle the more times you've been consistent more consistent than not consistent in your life that is like investing and it's like compound interest mm -hmm. and so j just doing it even if you fall off okay so what you fall off get back on again do it again you know oh who cares you fell off again get back on do it again and over the course of a decade if you always got back on the horse every time you fell off, like you're going to end up have stringing together more times on than off, and then that's where it gets easier. You know, speaking of uh, protein, there was a study that came out. Um, Dr. Rhonda Patrick was talking about it, where and I love I love studies, love studies. This is for coaches and trainers out there. When you're coaching and training people, oftentimes, especially if you do it for a long time, you just start to find things that work. And sometimes those things that work don't necessarily have the data to support them yet, but it works and you see that it works. And then eventually data comes out and says, oh, I was right along, all along. This study comes out and it shows that individuals who focused on eating more protein and fiber, that's all they did. They didn't try to cut their calories or anything. They just tried to eat more protein Naturally and more fiber. lost weight. Lost weight. Of course. Of they course. all lost body fat and they all preserved muscle. This was not a strength training study, by the way. These were not people lifting weights. All they did was hit protein and try to eat more fiber. Just doing that, chasing those two things, yeah. people lost weight, which wow. is crazy because we coached that way. Yeah. Yeah, it's because you, you you know, like, if you present this in front, like, what's going to happen as a domino effect after that? Like, it's going to, um, you know, eliminate some poor choices because we're seeking this yep. in replacement of that. Plus, you're satiated, so therefore, you know, you don't have the same kind of cravings, and there's all these, like... <sighs> byproducts of just doing that like focusing on that one thing that's going to move the needle so cool better. well there's two huge things happen there obviously there's a physiological thing happening with the appetite suppressing and the ability now to that's build muscle eat, and yeah. protein synthesis i mean that's a, then there's a psychological side of it of this is the coaching part yes yeah. telling yeah. people to go after something that's punishing thing yourself. you can't have yeah. yeah so instead of don't cut your calories hey go eat more of this yeah, yeah. and then I boom mean, they get yeah, I, I mean so when, much more effective when you figure that out as a coach and trainer it like opens up a whole new world for you of like how to coach and help people and a whole different spin on how to do it and for the first half of my career i didn't do it that way it was you know pr printing off a meal plan or writing a meal plan follow this and yep. do, you know yep. what i'm saying yep. do that and you know having these weekly like motivational meetings with your client where you're motivating them to be more consistent and i thought i told you you're not supposed to drink anymore and do that it's like versus like hey all i want you to focus on is this one thing right now and mm -hmm. then then look back you go like but wait don't i need no 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 just just go do that first go mm -hmm. do that and then I'll show you what we'll do next. And then you just kind of build on it like that. And it just gives this, this whole new freedom around a, a, a training, diet, and exercise. Totally. Hey, sorry to interrupt you. Look, are you lifting weights, eating a ton of food, and struggling? You're not packing on any muscle. You're not building any muscle at all. You're not getting stronger. Well, check it out. We have a hard gainer guide. This can be your ultimate resource to turn that around. Pack on some muscle mass with our hard gainer guide. It's totally free. You can get it by downloading it, clicking on the link in the description below. All right, science question for you guys. Uh, Justin, what science. is... <laughs> 
What is the largest organ on your body? <laughs> My body? Yeah. Bro, this is a family-friendly uh, show. What's the this, biggest organ? Yeah. Is this, you ever heard that song, uh, Love Gun by Kiss? <laughs> yes. Dude, it's it's my true. skin. Are we talking about like, yeah. It, yeah, that's an yeah. easy Did you question. guys, do you guys, by the way, do you guys remember uh, that being presented to you in junior high by your science teacher? I do remember that, that. That happened? You too? Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember I remember that. our science teacher came up and was like, all right, what's the biggest organ in your body? And all the guys are like, <laughs> 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 he's like, your skin. Anyway, yeah. the reason why I said that is uh, we're, we're, we're mentioning Caldera Lab today, and that's the you know the serum that goes on your skin, but I thought that'd be a funny way to to bring them up. Is yeah, that, would, does does Caldera Lab fall in the category of um, beauty product, skin health? Like it's a uh, health product. It, is that how you would categorize? I mean, it, it is beauty because it makes your skin look better. But the, the, their formulation is all about um, you know improving the health of your skin. So it's like okay, look, your skin will look better because it's healthier, not because you're wearing something that creates the illusion of health right right that's just kind of cool it's so, it so aligns with our message right of yep, like yep. chase chasing health and aesthetics follow that's right it's the same concept it's like instead of chasing uh these cover-ups makeup type stuff yep. to artificially do it how about just give yourself healthier skin right be be healthier skin wise and take care of yourself and you guess what you'll get the yeah. the, the aftermath or the after effect of that is uh, your skin looks better too totally totally yeah. all right so i was uh, earlier i was on x and uh you know they're they're talking about this department of government official that you know elon musk and yeah, yeah. doge -E. and uh what's the other guy's name um vivek. there you go vivek we're gonna do right and they're talking, we're gonna cut all this government whatever so um they're gonna meet with the i think it's the prime minister of argentina have you guys do you guys know who this guy is he's the yeah. guy that shook everything up right he's a libertarian, libertarian right they, yeah so he was yeah. like this hardcore libertarian um you know uh president and um, everybody was like, oh, my God, he's going to crush their economy. It's terrible. It's done the opposite. Well, here's what happened, right? So he went in, and in six months, he, he slashed 3,000-plus regulations, okay? He cut 50,000 in his first month government jobs. Mm -hmm. He eliminated half of all ministries. And here's what happened. Now, by the way, the reason why someone like him got elected, because he's got this radical, quote-unquote, yeah. radical idea. How did idea, that happen? The reason why he got elected was Argentina was facing 17,000% uh, inflation. Their projected inflation was 17,000%. So the people there were like, uh oh. Wow. And, and it was getting bad. Yeah. So they elected this guy who, you know, he's a big Milton Friedman, you know, person, big like it's government's fault, bring back free markets, blah, blah, blah. Hard message to sell to most countries because people like that security of the government, whatever. Well, they were, they were down a bad path. So they bring him in, he does all that. They were facing a 17,000% uh, inflation. Was Guess it, what it dropped down to? From 17,000%? From 17,000% in, uh, let me see. Yeah, till now. Guess I what mean, it's at now? I mean, if he cuts it in half, that would be amazing. Yeah, that would be huge. 2.4%. <laughs> it's six, how's that possible? Because it's projected. Because government spending is all inflation. Yeah, it's all inflation. It's yeah. all it fake it. money. Yeah, he got rid of it. The market becomes much more efficient. Um, they got a surplus. The country had a surplus because they were in a deficit. The first surplus in 123 years. See, that's what gives me hope. And their economy is growing. Yeah, it is growing again. I mean, especially after the seventh. Uh, audit is that the guy failure. Right there? That's him right here. He How looks, do you say his last name? He looks crazy. Millier? He looks Millier? crazy. <laughs> yeah. I they call know. him their media when he was running were, was referring to him as the crazy person, and he kind of did. He did this like shtick where he'd had he would have a bunch of government regulations. He'd cut them in half with a chainsaw <laughs> and he'd do it on TV and be like I'm going to slash <laughs> that's everything. So rad. And they'd say, well, which government you know agency you're going to keep? Well, none if I can. You know, he's like that's the way he talked. Uh -huh. But yeah, dude, he literally his policies say. Do you, do you think that's going to happen? Do you think I mean, Elon and uh, do you think he's going to come in there with? with it's hard um, to argue when you see like success. Like you know, that. I think I think that they. <sighs> so there's got to be a fear of this, right? I'm not I, sure I, how I know much that, power. I know that you huh? immediately. I mean, you you immediately always go the other way. Uh, so I know that's how your brain's already thinking. So I know this is, has to cross your mind that Elon goes in and helps cut government, yeah. but in all the areas that supports Tesla. Or makes it he cuts regulation, well, did, so his think, so his companies. Well, did you see what happened? No, no, no. The, uh, Trump already talked about eliminating the EVs. Uh, the energy, the green energy, or whatever the um, electric vehicle uh, um, mandates credit man, uh, credit. Oh, he, credit. He got he's getting yeah. rid of it. Yeah. So that'll hurt yeah. Elon. Maybe if he gets rid of that. Well, yeah. I mean, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe. Yeah. Right. 
Has, Initially, again, I mean, you got you got to be playing 3D chess right now, yeah, right? You, I mean, that's, this yeah, is a, maybe that's he, only maybe the, he's the he's only sacrificing electric vehicle that he's can sacrificing do it. a pawn right now, so you don't see what happens yeah. with the bishop. Yeah, you're pawn. right. You're right. He could right because it could be like he's the only company that could survive that. Right. right. It's like when companies support minimum wage, right? You know, right. Rising. Right. Like, go ahead, so, dude. We can yeah, support yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, so that's got that. I mean, that's what makes me as much as I'm excited about the people and the potential. Yeah. Of the direction we're going, I'm not. I'm not like full on fucking. Well, we don't know. hat wearing. It's, let's go. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Right. Until until I start seeing more, and that what we don't see is because they could very it's easily hype right now. They could, like, it's they, all they, words right now. Yeah, they could very and, and they could very easily take action in the direction that they're saying, but it only to really support them, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Like if you if he goes in and he cuts regulation and government stuff, then it opens the door for fucking Tesla, yeah. SpaceX, and everything like that. So they can fucking, what? They get the fast lane sure. and they don't worry about hair salons and the n nutrition and all this other, it's like, oh, okay, well, yeah, he cut some regulation, but he, all he really did was give himself a green light so he could go make way more money and they have a backdoor deal where it's like, all right, we're going to let you come in here. We're going our whole messaging is going to be let's cut regulations, let's do all this stuff for the people, but really what I'm going to do is open up the floodgates for you. You're going to go dominate. I'm going to get a little backdoor plug from you cuz I'm your boy and we fist pump behind right, we'll why, we, why we make everybody believe yeah, we're Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens cuz right now it is a lot it's just words. Yeah. It's all just words. Yeah. But the funny thing is the crazy thing is like I said, they're going to be meeting with this guy. Yeah. I mean, I'm more, I'm more, and he's gonna, and, and, I'm more hopeful than I've been yeah. in the last 4 years, that's yeah, for sure, yeah, yeah. but I'm still skeptical well, of shit. Yeah, and any organization like this is always the potential to be corrupt so it's like i mean as long as we're we're trying to cut costs right now like and that's a big focus like i'm on board yeah like, let's cut let's at least have accountability uh when you're supposed to meet uh yes you, you have to show transparency of where you're spending the money like if, at least if we get transparency i feel like we're getting somewhere absolutely so he, Doug just pulled up. Yeah, that was so. Its projected inflation was seventeen thousand okay. percent. I know, but, then, I, but actual inflation was one hundred thirty-three percent. I know, but why is it one hundred thirty-three percent is higher than seventy-two percent? No, 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 no. Now it's down to seven uh, two point seven percent. So it was high. It, was it never high. it never went up to seventeen thousand percent. Projected, but I mean, projected, but, so. but still. So so if I'm understanding this correctly. The the two point seven is right now twenty twenty four. And so just last year was at 133. That's right. So 133 down to 2.7 is incredible. 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 Absolutely. Yeah, it's incredible. Absolutely. I mean, we, could, we, we struggled to go from like nine yeah. down to two point yes. something. Yeah. And, yeah. and it took us two years of doing that. I know. I know. So to do that in six months, and uh, that's, that's crazy. I know. I wow, know. but he went. Like I said, he went in like with a with a hatchet and just just eliminated. Now that's what the the excitement potentially is around Elon. I know like I feel like when you say Elon Musk you either have your I'm super fans or I hate him right but mm -hmm. you hope that that's what he's going to do is like what he did to Twitter is mm -hmm. he's going to go in and he's going to cut heads and get rid of it as mm -hmm. all everything and anything that looks inefficient and if that happens that's going to be a really awesome thing yeah. yeah, a very awesome thing for all of us. There'll be a little pain at first, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, most things yeah. are like that. But people don't understand. I think a lot of people don't realize what inefficiency is. Just wasted resources. So yeah. the the, the and the, we're paying for those inefficiencies. Yeah, it's like you're paying for people to not go into the office. Did you see that? Like the vast majority of these federal employees work from home. Yeah. Maybe shows up once a week. Right. Um, some of them, in fact, some of them now are doing these kind of like anonymous articles and saying, well, yeah, like if I work too fast, like there's like, they tell us to slow down. Otherwise we'll have nothing to do. And then when we have nothing to do, they have, they, they let us go hang out or whatever. Yeah, well, They're we talking about just how inefficient it oh, is. Oh my God. And then it's, and it's perpetuated by the way they even get the money allocations, right? So if you have a department that gets allocated 2 billion or say $2 million a year to go, whatever, yeah. save the ducks somewhere. Like and they only spent one point five. That means only, next year you get one point five. So they're incentivized to spend every last That's penny right. of it, even if you meet, do it on bullshit, yeah. so that we keep the keep, they keep their budget. Their they, friends, they can, and, yeah, they and, can keep uh, everybody employed. Cohorts. and They can keep operating at their prop. They don't. So, they don't go out of business when they suck. No. Yeah. They just get more money. Yeah. <laughs> yes. No. So no, it's it's totally. Ridiculous yeah, we'll see what happens. Structure. Anyway, I want to hear about this. This I don't know if it's is it conspiracy. Oh, thing? oh, the thing I was just <laughs> so I was just watching this. So Doug has to pull it up and see if we can find. Uh, it was Will Smith who was trolling back the guy that was doing this interview. So there's this okay. podcast interview came in my feed, and the guy is saying that 
There are underground tunnels. Justin will love this because it's yeah. Justin believes in all yeah. these underground tunnels. I do. There's well, there are underground tunnels in LA. Yeah, yeah that's true. You say you well, I, they're in proven. Disneyland too, right? I know that. I've, well, I've, no, these, they're all un abandoned apparently. And well, people say like that. There's Playboy drugs. Mansion has a few too. That's like, true. So, so yeah, that's, yeah. So there's say definitely what you there's will. definitely some underground tunnels. Yeah. Okay, according to this guy who supposedly worked at an underground Starbucks that nobody knows about that serves Starbucks coffees to the rich and famous oh, like, for free. Like in the tunnels? Yes, in the tunnels. Okay. So that's, accordingly, that's... That's, that's cool. Right? I, I, I mean, yeah. it'd be cool if you could prove it, right? Yeah. Uh, and that that they all have all the all the actors, and they call it the actor bond, is they have the, all these freeway accesses that pop up to LAX and the, the ballpark and wherever they want to really go, and it's all underground tunnels, and they, the, only they get access to Doug, it. Doug, when you look up Wait actor bond, what do you see? So... Okay, yeah, that's hilarious, and I, yeah, it's, it's that's a fun one. Uh, <laughs> but uh, let me tell you about the real ones. Yeah, that's yeah. what that is sitting the no, table. No, because you know Elon had a company that actually was making tunnels. Oh, like, yeah. to LAX uh, all the way out. Right, I, I knew you. They to, wanted like, to do that. Vegas even. Um, yeah, with the with the vacuum tube, like yeah. Yeah, yeah, and they did make them, and so it's like they're there. I don't know how they're using them or if they're inoperable or what's happening. But have you ever seen? There's no like follow up to this stuff. So they really did dig. I thought they yeah. stopped it. And I think so they the did conspiracy. It. Well, look at that. What does that say? That and well, you know, Vegas that has all Teslas have underground roads. Wow, there's a whole article written on this. Yeah, to go tunnel. to move through um, Vegas underneath everybody. So, so it's not like in now the, totally unplausible. The, the next, like the the deeper uh, layer to this conspiracy theory is that those tunnels are used for sex traffic. Well, yeah, so yeah, well, I mean, I mean which my brain, which would make sense why it stays super under the radar, right? Yeah. Have you ever seen a map? Speaking of which, have you ever seen a map of missing persons and you place it over? National parks, you ever seen that? Yeah, I brought yeah. that up a few times. You did? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, bro. Yeah, it's bad. Oh, yeah. yeah you, don't, like you don't want to get lost in a national park if you're a kid. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're shit. <laughs> yeah. For multiple reasons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can think of a few. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's mountain lions. I brought I, that up. Uh, you yeah. did. But these underground tunnels, apparently, like, uh, the Playboy Mansion had one that connected to somewhere else and then yeah all they all connect to each other right? yeah it's like a ship port i feel like one of us would know i feel like one of us would be Why? connected well because there, it's like uh why would we know i mean what are we z z list actors yeah. <laughs> we don't get invited <laughs> Wait, to shit yeah, yeah, like, what, 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 what level is podcasters <laughs> nobody <laughs> would ever invite what us we? we would be the we're not, G, G list. List. we would yeah, also we would also immediately talk shit hey you guys want to come down i know i fucking do it <laughs> <laughs> Uh, These guys are hey, talking about wearing a mask. I'm anonymous. Uh, uh, talk about a list people. I was before we were we were off air, and I was and I thought I shared this. I thought I shared the T Pain thing with you already. But Sal has been making fun of uh, what he calls a video game. It's not a video game. Oh my god! It is a real life. It is a giant. Video it's a game. real life simulator. That Doug and I are working on getting all our, video games are simulated. Working on getting our license. <laughs> we're living okay. in a simulation. So. Yeah, 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 your life is a simulator. All, all video games are a simulation. Stop. Are simulators? All Vi games. Not these. This is real life. Zelda was a simulator. No, that's not a simulation. All right, go ahead. That's not a simulator. That's a video game. That's that's. Pixels. Anyways, you made a comment about I should fire up my Twitch, do a Twitch account. Yeah, dude. I do want to. And I'll tell you why. I was watching this. I was watching. Isn't it uh, crazy how many people will watch people play video games? Yes. Yeah. It's crazy. Yes. And it you, is. if you actually have a little bit of a built-in audience. Yeah, you are, good, though. And you're actually decent, good. But here's the thing what I've learned about this. I have like I have a little nephew that does it. He makes a little bit of money doing it. Does uh, he really? He makes money. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he makes a nice little side hustle. It's not like he's not why, rich. Why, because he's good at a game? Yeah, he's good. That's but you know, crazy. so here's the thing though. But you know, he tells me more importantly than being really, really good, it's entertaining. You, entertaining. Yeah. Oh, people. Like, so now, if that, that now the home run is your badass and, and you're inter and you're yeah. entertaining, or yeah, you're yeah. badass and you're famous. Hmm. So T Pain is really I forget what game he plays, but he was being asked in an interview why he doesn't uh, tour anymore and do any more shows. Just like, why? He's he dropped how much he gets paid on Twitch. Look up how much T-Pain makes on Twitch. T-Pain's making all his money on Twitch? Yeah, right. What I'm game like, does he play? What? I'll, I'm sure Doug, when okay. he pulls the article. By the way, do you know Elon was awesome. number, We just came out. He's number, I think he's number one in the world in Diablo. Yeah. I know he's been I heard that. before. No, no, it just happened. Oh, he like, just broke a record or something like that. Oh. I don't know if it was number one or top four. One of the like main that. investors for Uber, I guess, was like the top ranked like Wii tennis player. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Travis. So no, that's Travis. That's yeah. the that's the founder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. What? Like TV makes fifty six dollars per hour, dog. 
fifty to sixty thousand dollars per hour. Yes. Wow. No. What? Yeah, see how much you're making fun of me when I'm doing that over there? You I dro- hey, I drop hey, that on my book. You I, you're like, you're like, get in here. We're gonna do this. Says, fuck you, bro. Yeah, <laughs> I'm making sixty grand right now. You better pay me more sixty grand to get on that podcast. With, you better pay me sixty yeah. grand to get on that podcast you, with you. If you start making that much, yeah, I'll definitely eat yeah. my words. Yeah, that's crazy. Wild, right? Does it say what game he plays? Yeah. Why would he tour? He's missing out on money. He's, I mean, so to me that what so I'm sure I've never watched him, but I'm sure he's got like a sense of humor. He's a, he's got he's a charismatic guy. Was it a doctor so, disrespect? Yeah, because right? he's just entertaining. Yeah, you're, if you're entertain and he was really good, right? He was so good. If you're really good and you have the entertainment factor, that's so how does that work? I've never been on there. You have to it's pay. Bro, it's, just, it's just like so. It, is getting, it like OnlyFans but for video games where you pay and then you, you access? No, their no, page? no, no. So a couple ways you get paid. <clears throat> so it's just like you're streaming, and so the platform is paying you for eyeballs and attention combo. So. They pay you. Yes, Twitch. They're, they're getting paid by Twitch. Then people can also give you donations and stuff like that. But so he yeah. ain't getting no, nobody's donating to T Pain. He's, he's oh, already rich. I, oh, I don't know. I mean, like if but he, that's crazy. So Twitch pays people because they're attracting viewers. So yeah. much view. oh. yeah, so many and, that, and that's why you get paid per hour like that. Is if wow. you if you got people's entire attention for hour, two hour, three hours, just like if we did a YouTube video that garnered the attention of millions of people for hour, how we get much, paid millions. You know, I was wondering like how much. Uh, Eminem made for his like concert he did in Roblox. I don't know about that because he, like I remember my kids were all fascinated by it because it was like you know every kid was gonna have to like show up and watch it and they were all like enamored <laughs> by it and I'm like dude that's like, there were so many people in there weird. millions yeah that's so weird for just this you, one concert yeah so he he's playing games he doesn't specify something interesting though is Seven Eleven paid him two hundred fifty thousand dollars to play any game he wanted for two hours all he had to do was say you know go get some pizza or drinks down at 7-eleven yes. so that's the other way they make tons of money that's brilliant marketing <laughs> by yeah. the way so once some you kids get watching someone play video games <laughs> we should get pizza. Well, <laughs> i want to get a slurpee no right that's now. how long, so that's i mean once you get that much attention paying attention to you it's no different than how we have ads and advertisers that that's sponsor wild. the show yeah it's just all, and there's and you know what there's way more kids addicted to video games than people listen yeah. to podcasts. Mm-hmm. What? Okay, I got a question for you guys. What's the one video game that we've all played, but you know for sure you'll beat th- all of us in? Like, do we all have that game? Do you guys have a game? <laughs> like, you think you can beat us in Street Fighter? I don't for think sure. You, uh, yeah, no For way. sure. Yeah, that's you for thinking. Crush you in Street well, Fighter. Well, yeah, Off-Road in here, I beat all your asses. He did. Sounds like a challenge to me. <laughs> that's true. Um, yeah, it's usually what? like adventure games or like car yeah. games. I mean, I'm smashing like... you guys. But do you have a game? game oh yeah, I'm, I mean, any. I'll take you guys on any sport game: NHL, NBA. I never played them. Madden, so all those. Could. I'll trash you in all those. All right, but you think you beat me in Street okay. Fighter, huh? I think I give you. I'd, a good, I'd be up there in, in NHL. I used to yeah. play that a lot. D- Doug, do you play video games? No, not really. Never, huh? I never did it. Yeah. No. Only simulators. Yeah, just play. Ah, that a boy. That a boy. <laughs> oh, uh, Goldeneye. Come on, let's bring that back. Oh, oh yeah. Were you good at that? I'd good that game. I'd play that for days. Uh, yeah, uh, you played Halo for a long time, right? Mm-hmm. I don't, Halo? I never really got... I got mm-hmm. a little bit into that, but then I was out before it was like real popular. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, I have a free guide that teaches you how to lose fat in three steps. Just three steps that will burn the most amount of body fat and help keep it off... This guide is totally free. We're giving it to everybody right now. If you want it, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Are you taking immunity? What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. Are you getting sick? I just felt like a little itchy throat. That that stuff. A lot of shit going around right now. That stuff's uh, is legit. That's a very very good product from them. I don't think I've tried it. It's actually not. Yeah, no, no, no. It's 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 really good. Anyway, so Street Fighter. You guys, you played. Yeah. Who's your character? Guile. Okay. Guile's the best. Yeah. I like Guile. Huh? I I do like Guile. Mm-hmm. I can play with. I can play anybody. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen the I'll AI? You, you You're not like Chung Lee. Or oh, that's, I was going to tell you. You can pick whoever you want for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll Zangief you. I'll spin you. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the samurai guy? I used to play him sometimes. The wholesome. Samurai. The Indian guy. The samurai one. Isn't that samurai? Samurai? Oh, that's that's, 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 that's the E-Honda, wholesome. Dude. That's the, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. E Honda. E the samurai. I mean, not samurai. What do you what do you call the big sumo? Oh yeah, that's E Honda. Yeah. yeah, my bad. The Halsum does the same thing with the hands, too. No, he doesn't. He, yes, doesn't, he does. No, he, he does. does. Shoot the flame! This. He just stretches out. Yeah. Stay yeah. <laughs> All right, so I got I to gotta cover this because Doug wanted me to bring this up because he's been waking up uh, in the middle of the night. What time do you wake up in the middle of the night, Doug? Around 4 o'clock. Okay. Do you know what the, the, the top reasons why people wake up in the middle of the night are? And I think one of them might be, I don't know. Do you have caffeine anymore? That's actually one of the that's the number one reason is caffeine. There's an enzyme. There's wait, wait, a, wait, not having caffeine. No, having caffeine. Oh, yeah. So, so you, people might be able to fall asleep, 
And then uh, we'll wake up in the middle of the night because of a gene called CYP1A2 and how they metabolize caffeine. So they'll go to sleep and then just start waking up in the middle of the night and I wonder, not know why. It's oftentimes the caffeine. Then there's uh, sleep apnea. That's the other one, mm, by the way. So you, you might, yeah, for people who snore and stuff, wake yeah. themselves up in the middle of yeah. the night. And then perimenopause is the other one. So that's you don't have caffeine. Mm, probably not perimenopause. Check all the boxes. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah perimen perimenopause is another one that's really tough. By the way, the, the, the uh, I've just learned this. With a lot of the hormone issues that women will experience, um, simply becoming more insulin sensitive tends to balance them out because of the relationship between things like estrogen and insulin. So when your your insulin become when you become resistant to insulin, you start to mess up your estrogen and then progesterone as well. Mm -hmm. Hey, you you're talking about back to Doug's sleep though. You're talking about is it a good or a bad thing then from him to use like a product like Ned Sleep? Is that something that he should great. Great, great, great. Yeah, Ned Sleep is uh, be, be, with the with what they have in there with the cannabinoids and the herbs that are in there. They're all really good at getting you sleep and keeping you to sleep. By the way, you do use that. I do, especially when I wake up at four a.m. Do you uh, take it then? I'll it take it four? then. Actually, yeah. Oh, you take and then it. How four. long do you stay asleep past after that? Oh, then after that, I'm fine. Mm. It, so sometimes I I go to the bathroom at four four a.m. Yeah. I go back to bed, and I just just can't go back to sleep. And then I remember, oh, I should go take Ned's sleep. And then I get up and take it, and then I go to sleep. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Uh, my, this, you guys, I have my like my nightstand is just full of all of our stuff. Do you do that too? Where you wake up, you have to take things. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have it just in case. If there's ever like it, like if yeah, I have I, that I, next to my body, I got all, I got all of our stuff. <laughs> I yeah. thought waking up in the middle of the night was just as you got older, as a man, you have to wake up in the middle of the night, uh, especially to go pee. It's been consistent for me since I was a kid. Yeah, but you know, do you know that? Uh, and my wife was telling me this, and um, and I read about it that you have a you produce a hormone when you're sleeping really deeply that will allow you to just not have to wake up. The reason why you wake up to have to pee is not because you have to pee; it's because you woke up. Then you wake up, you get the sensation yeah. of having to pee, and then you go pee. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you would have stayed asleep. Mm. Isn't that weird? That is weird. Yeah, but is you've it, had it since you were because it's still it's certainly because I'll dream about peeing and that's waking and uh, wakes me up. <laughs> so explain that, buddy. But wait, <laughs> yeah, I have had yourself almost happens? every night that I have because I get up to pee at least once or twice a night every night. It almost every time one of those is uh, created from me dreaming that I have to go pee in the dream. You might not produce enough of the hormone that hold that helps maintain. You've had that since you were a kid, huh? Yeah, it's been consistent forever. Forever, forever. As long as you can remember. Mm -hmm. Do you pee? Do you accidentally pee yourself sometimes? Never. You dream? Okay. Yeah, never. <laughs> Not that I know of. Good. I should yeah. ask Katrina that. You should ask Katrina yeah. that. You woke up wet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sit next to Adam. Yeah, Maybe. no, my, uh, little kids too. What they'll a start to. Didn't tell me. You'll notice this with kids too. They'll start to produce this hormone as they grow up, and they'll just stop having to pee in the middle of the night, and that's how you'll know. Like, oh, we could take off diapers or whatever. Mm. Yeah, interesting. How's stuff. your how's uh how's your sleep going? Are you uh, are you allowed to sleep in the bed with your wife? No, I snore too loud, dude. So you get kicked out. We, you? No, we have to sleep right now separately. So and it's really frustrating. You're like a like a 50s couple, huh? I know, dude. <laughs> so that's so stupid. <laughs> I saw your uh, in her I, rooms. But wait, hey, no, I'm gonna. You know what? I'm gonna fix it, dude. I'm gonna fix the snoring. I don't, I don't even know if I believe you. I'm going. You to. did a post yesterday when it was wow. your day in the life. Should I go after 700 pound deadlift yeah. just to see? And even our audience was like, no, I, asshole. Yeah, I know. You know why I did that? I was so proud of our audience. I posted that. I wanted to see what they would say. And the question was, should I should I go for a 700-pound deadlift? Uh, yes, forget your health, go for it. No, you represent health. Don't do it. 58% said no. They care about me. Listen to <laughs> that's, You know what I mean? Yeah, they do. That's yeah. nice, dude. Well, they've watched you Some over the last five years. <laughs> it's like, this guy's getting out of control. No. With you. Somebody needs an intervention. Everybody else is here for the freak show. You yeah. got to yeah. pop yeah. 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 By the way, if you then go get through. Get bigger. Yeah, shut bet, up. Get bigger. If, I bet if you go through and look at who said yes, like I bet there's an avatar. Of course there is. Most Those are all the guys that are like, fuck it, there should be steroids legal in sports. Let yeah. them go. Let them go as crazy as they want. Let's yeah. just see what happens. Yeah. That's I, was, I was back there voting yes. yes. No, yes. you weren't. Yes. <laughs> you just want to see what happens. Keep going. Yeah, oh, no. see what happens. You no, can... no, I was I was actually quite happy that they uh, that they did that. So what, okay, if if you're being honest. Yeah. And you're gonna try and 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 lose some weight. Yeah. What is the strategy or plan? First, reduce inflammation because that contributes quite a bit. So that's just reducing my calories uh, and not eating foods that can cause inflammation. So that already will get rid of eight pounds of water just off my body pretty quickly when I do that. Yeah. So do that first. Now what? Okay. I'm, I'm also I got myself a new CPAP machine coming. So oh, I ordered one. another one. Why I a did one? because I don't like the other one and it just it was uncomfortable whatever. But I did some research 
And so I think I got, I'm going to get one with the is mask. Is it like less fits. invasive or something? Well, or? the machine itself is a better quality one. And then the mask, I got, I, I think I'm going to get one that actually, because it bothered me, dude. Can it would like sit on the bridge of my nose and it just, it would just, it was yeah, causing dude, problems. Can you even sleep on your side with those things? You can, but you want to know what's crazy? When I did, the nights I did get it to not hurt on my nose, uh -huh. I'd fall asleep on my back and slept hard. Yeah. Which is weird. I sleep mm -hmm. on my back every night. I never sleep on my yeah, back. I can't. How do you, are you a side sleeper? Side sleeper. You too? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. But mm -hmm. sleeping on your back is probably more comfortable for your... Really? Yeah. With his big-ass glutes? I think <laughs> his hips is back. more... His big my hips. Why? My <laughs> hips in the morning I think it would cause achy. this big arch in his No, that's why his hips hurt, bro. Yeah, it does. Big old ass. Yeah, <laughs> 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 hey, you're like a pregnant lady. You have to put your... He I does. Put, you have to put a pillow between your legs. He puts pillows. I have a fuck ton of pillows, dude. I turn into a pillow monster, dude. <laughs> dude wait, it's on. embarrassing. Hey, you know what? I started using a lot of pillows too, but I, I let me guess. You have one for your head. Yeah, one for my you head. You have one for your arms. Well, I have two for my head. Okay, two big, for that big ass, big ass, big ass melon. Dude, you need two pillows. <laughs> I need fucking listen. <laughs> Otherwise, all this shit comes up like hot lava. Oh, okay, okay. Bro, do you have to like? Uh, I gotta get like, my head up a little you have to bit take higher. Take the pillows and like structure yourself in a uh, way. Yeah, I have it, and I gotta fluff it too. If I don't fluff it, <laughs> shit just sinks, dude. Okay. Like I got like a like a cannonball, um, <laughs> and then I put one over my top of my head. Because a of the pillow demons. over your head? Yeah. Why, why don't you just wear an eye mask? Because that's fucking dumb. Or dark the room out. <laughs> Do you guys not have a dark room? Hold uh, on. I, yeah, I dark the room, but I still, like, I'm like, no. Oh, you put a big-ass pillow on your head? So I just, I always have since he's I was He's always done that in the hotel. I just yeah. thought that was because of the it's light. It's because he's scared, dude. It's because he's scared. <laughs> he's going to protect him from, yeah, the, from the fucking monster. Well, oh, yeah, you get visited by demons and they <laughs> tell me you're scared. I told you. Okay, so one on your head, two under your, two under your head, one on your face. Yeah, and one then, on my face. And then meanwhile, it's, it's I have a fucking it's arm You have, like, one little pillow over Yeah, she here. says one. I usually steal hers all the time. She gets mad. Uh, um, and I have like an arm pillow that's like this big, and I that's what I want. I you hug, 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 and then I have the one here. So I'm here, and I'm here. Whoa, and Whoa. one here. Wow, I know it's a lot. <laughs> It's that's, like a mountain. That's a lot of, of fluff. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, Adam's hips are comfortable. You ever seen him put his legs together? Like yeah. he, he looks like he's sleep. What happened to our pillow sponsor? He sleep all night. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what happened to our pillow sponsor. Huh? I don't know. Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, what happened yeah, to our yeah, pillow sponsor? I, I when I was you know when I was younger in my twenties in particular, I could I, I could still fall asleep whenever I want, but I slept hard. Yeah. Like I'd fall asleep and then that was it. Yeah, I don't want to hear. But that's my either. answer for not having a CPAP. So yeah, you know, I'm gonna do whatever I no, can. I'm gonna get it, dude. I'm gonna try. I don't snore ridiculous. right now. I, I snore when I get like uh, you, every time I've shared a room with you, you snore every time. Yeah, but when we're, that's different. When we're traveling. I'm I'm taking any drug I can to put us to sleep. Or not, <laughs> Wait, we're like, why did you say put us to sleep? <laughs> 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 oh, no. yeah, I'm drunk, Justin. What's Man, happening? <laughs> I was gonna say it's a little different. When I, I wake up in the you. morning like, oh yeah. god, I, was, I, was, I had terrible dreams. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, hotel, no, no baby count, oil in my. You can't hotel count room. hotel sleep because I'm sure, like we, yeah, uh, that's not like yeah. cons at home. I mean, Katrina says that she goes. I ask, I always ask her, I'm like, hey, have you heard me snoring a long time? And she's like, no, you haven't snored in a long time. It's normally when I get up weight when like how you are. Yeah, uh, yeah. If I start putting weight on, uh, I get to a certain, and it doesn't matter. It could be good weight, it could be muscle. Yeah. Just certain. Once I get to a certain size, it's like, just, there's a genetic. Your, your, your tongue to be, grows too, right? Your tongue grows, yeah, dude. If you gain weight, your freaking tongue gets fatter. Yeah. It's so weird. My, it so you. There's something, there's also a genetic component, I think. Like my grandfather, who the one who passed away a couple of years ago, bro, he would snore, snore so loud, like in the house. <laughs> if you slept at my grandparents' house. That's, that's my dad, dude. You, that's, it that's it Katrina, didn't matter what room you were in. That's Katrina's brother. We have to, we, the, we have to struck, we have to, when he walls. stays over and we have hall label shit, we, everyone puts him in the furthest room. It, and then it there's it white noise the in between. House? Yes, because he's, he's like, and if his door is open, you whole, whole house will hear oh it. Oh my God. And you can hear it through the door for sure, but if it's open, it'll fuck everybody sleep up. Do you know that? Do you know that? <laughs> that's how bad he is. Do you know that? That, that uh, there's obviously most common reasons why people get a divorce. Do you know snoring makes the list? Really? Have you guys seen that? So what are it's the, a small percentage? What, okay. it, it infidelity, no, money. Up, how many right. divorces infidelity, happen because of snoring? Snoring. Yeah. What are top ten reasons for divorce? Well, that's not. I don't even think it's top ten, but it's like there's like a, oh. enough where it makes the list where people. Actually, did, so like, you imagine you get divorced because you snore. Drugs. Yeah. I mean, I'd be so mad. Uh, I think that. I mean, think about it. If you, I, I could see it. If you have a partner who does, and he or she is not willing to to. Do the work to probably solve it or fix well, it. Well, you've got other problems in your marriage if that's your divorce. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're right. 
<laughs> it's not just the snoring. I mean, the truth, loading the dishwasher that, wrong. You yeah. know, it's like, fuck. yeah, man, that one drives me yeah. crazy. Yeah. That drives you crazy. For all, that drives me crazy. Yeah. You know, I you know I talk, I talk about the. I mean, I'm the dishwasher fucking organized guy, yeah, right? Yeah, My yeah. big tip that I gave yeah. fucking once one in ten. <laughs> the years. one viral tip that he <laughs> gave. <laughs> well, it's good thing you got that guy on the show. I'm he gave us that one tombstone dish, dishwasher yeah, yeah. tip. My wife still just doesn't follow the rules. She doesn't. I don't know. You, you know, know she that, does it on purpose because she knows. She doesn't. No, she just doesn't give a shit. Is what I mean. Because I do the dishes at night. She does them in. The, that when they're when she's home with Max, she's, she's like, she's just, what's like thinking of Adam? And I, like, stupid. Who cares? And I don't. You know, when you when you've been this to, when you've been together this long, you just chalk that shit up, right? Fuck this him. is just. I have to take all her dishes out of the dishwasher and fucking put them all back in. No, you don't. Yes. What happens if you just hit play? Is it just, does, does it just clean them all? No, 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 no. no. Play, play. no you know what I mean? Yeah, you know how many times he's done dishes right there. Right? <laughs> she just hit play and just oh god, bro, she just throw some soap. Oh, you're yeah. the and worst you do this person. Every to, night, oh dude. my god, dude. Fun. Oh my god. No, like it doesn't just clean. It cleans them. Of course it does, but in order to so what happens is Here, did, that this one of your sound like ridiculous. Go ahead. No, I'm not gonna sound ridiculous. Right. I'm sound brilliant again. Yeah. So get ready. Maybe right. you can learn something right now. <laughs> get <laughs> your notepad. Yeah. Fucking well, get your notepad. Yeah. Yeah. Probably play, something about hit the play, it, hit the play button and then matching something. No, 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 no. Okay. I'm just you. If you don't load the dishwasher right, you can fit probably a quarter of oh, the amount yeah. of dishes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when I get there at nighttime and the, you don't have, oh, I she's see. thrown no everything right. She'll throw a fucking big plastic pot in there. <laughs> put, you know, say so, and it's like I don't even do that. Yeah, bro. Silverware's all mixed match, and I'm like, you know, say like. There, and I got to do the dinner dishes and there's no room to fit the five <laughs> dinner dishes in there because that, that shit's in there. So I got to take it all out, reorganize the silverware, put it all the way it should be in there, wash the big fucking plastic thing that's this big that shouldn't be in there. <laughs> yeah. Your you know, wife does that? Yes. That's a guy move, bro. bro she's a dude. That's, that's such a totally dude. She's dude. a dude for all those all those things. <laughs> she right? looks at us like, I don't want to wash this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dude. Dude. I mean, yeah. yeah. I say so. I, so I don't even say shit. Just chalk it up, man. She's amazing in so many of things. Course. That is, she's yeah, so yeah. awesome. That's a good... Spouse, right there. You That's just, a good marriage, right you there. You just have to. I you mean, just deal with the little things. When man. you've been together yeah. for a really long time, That's true. you know. It, but I tell you what, though, it took me a while to for that to register. I had, you know, I don't know if it was age or being together with the right person for long or enough. You just give up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you really do. You, you start down. to go like, you know what? Like, it's like that. It is very annoying. Okay, it's very very annoying to do it because I have. It's, but it's like okay. It ruins three minutes of my day every yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, for the amount of joy she gives in my life, that if I could just power through those three that's minutes, right, that's right. and I wouldn't trade the, the, that three-minute frustration for all these other things that she's probably doing while I'm doing that. So it's just like, you got to learn to chalk that shit yeah. up. That's hard. And I think it takes, uh, I don't know, uh, marriage maturity it does. to yeah. get to that point because you're never going to find somebody who's 100% fucking no. exactly like you or perfect no. or that. And so you got to look at those things and be like, is it really that big of a deal? And you know what? I've even tried to reframe it like it becomes Let's my- take a big deep breath. That's what I do. Put on my music, <laughs> smoke my joint. It's my quiet time by myself. Drives like, me to using drugs? Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't smoke weed before. <laughs> What's your secret? <laughs> my, hey, you know what though? Uh, you hang around old couples. like like I'm talking about people who've been married for 40 years or 30, yeah, 40, yeah, yeah. 50 years. And you hear them when they joke and talk about each other. It's exactly what they do. Yeah, yeah. it's like, oh, that's just how we. Yeah, use. Just, that's just how she always does yeah. that. Shit. And that's just the way it is. It, I mean, how many times? I mean, do you see this with couples? Like the the, the stuff you decide that you're gonna fight over is like really like yeah. that's like you're you, gonna you're gonna die on that hill. Like, like you know you know how much like my yeah, par like my parents are great at this. Geez, totally. When I was a kid, they used to fight all the time. Right now, it's like they'll bicker and it's funny, and then they'll both laugh about it and tease each other. Like, like there, I mean, lots of things, but like one of them is like my dad, when he tells stories, he loves to tell stories and he'll exaggerate, you know, he'll tell the story and he'll yeah. talk about like, and she'll call and, him out. Oh yeah, dude. She just calls him out the whole time and he just rolls his eyes. You always got to talk and they just go back and forth. But I remember when I was a kid, <laughs> it's cause of Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, he would but... tell a story. She'd correct him and he'd be like, like you're ruining the story. It would cause like a fight. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's not how I remember it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my God, dude. Yeah, that's good oh, stuff. Yeah. It's so true, though, yeah. dude. It's so do, true. Do we have a shout out for today? We did. We we did. Uh, what did we decide? Doug, we, we, we decided. I think it was a show because we oh yeah, yeah Silo. Up, yeah, yeah, Silo. Yeah, Silo. Oh, on what is Apple? That? Like, so we watched the first season. It was amazing. This is the second season came out just now, and uh, sci-fi. Sci it's it's they're living in these. Silos that are underground. That's right. You told me about this. And it's. it's Did you great. never watch it? No, I don't have Apple TV. Too cheap? 
Huh? Yeah, dude. I, I, like, I have so many of them. I don't want another guy. one. Gosh, damn. You budgeting right now uh, or something? Dude, no, like, no. Yeah. Didn't want a part of our video game. <laughs> don't, don't buy Apple. What's going on over I know, there? I know. Uh, <laughs> so, and so it, but you keep talking about it. It's yeah, good. No, you'd like it. Okay, is there a lot I'm, of good I'm not a big sci fi guy. I really enjoy is it. Is there a lot the, of good stuff on Apple TV or am I going to pay for Apple oh, TV? Oh, Apple TV is one of the best. A ton of good stuff. Apple TV is one of the best. They also have Foundation, which is another amazing sci fi show that I'm waiting for. I don't know when they're coming next season but that's a really expansive like dune kind of quality uh sci-fi if you had to if you had to nail down to four streaming services what four are you doing well i have netflix disney because of my kids uh amazon prime that's all we use actually just those three right there yeah so disney disney's solid netflix is the junk food of streaming so yeah. it's like i guess Dude, i don't even use disney anymore oh you don't none not at, at all. all not at all yeah really my kids never even liked it growing up either, which is interesting. Yeah, I was such a. I was born on. I you was like raised Universal on. Stuff, I was right? raised. Oh, on we had all the VHS. Yeah, I know. I did too. I had. Yeah. I was like, you know, fond of all the characters and stuff. But yeah. like, it's yeah. interesting. Yeah, we don't even watch that. Yeah, I actually well, make Max watch it with me. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, yeah. you like it that yeah, much. Yeah, because I think mean, so. I grew up. Remember, I'm oldest of five. So not only did I grow up watching it, but then I had oh my god, it's me, same thing. Four siblings behind me. Yeah, watching so you're it. watching all this stuff. So I watching. watched every Disney classic. 30 times yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. probably yeah. more actually like so that that there's a lot of nostalgia there for me for everyone i know all of them you know and i've seen all of them a, a ton of times and so i like to, i like to i make them watch do you have a favorite that's not like a like a everybody favorite? yeah yeah which one uh um sword in the stone oh, oh that's yeah, a that was great a good one that's my favorite yeah that's one of my yeah, favorites. i liked uh um lady and the tramp yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah i used to like that i liked the uh, robin hood robin hood oh yeah robin that yeah. was pretty good the jungle book my number one though that's the best. You know, it's really crazy. Have you ever gone back and looked at when all of those were made? Old. Really old. old. Oh, yeah. yeah and so they old. used some of the same animations. They just repurposed them. Yeah. Yeah, like is, the Jungle yeah. Book and Jungle Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. There's like, like a sequence where yeah. uh, uh, Robbins or whatever his name is is like running like running a log Robin. and doing something. Yeah. And, Chris, and it's the same mm -hmm. sequence for, uh, for the Jungle Book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stuff. No, I mean that. So, so that's why I watch. I watched. I'm, I the stuff that new stuff that Disney does. I don't watch any of that shit. Yeah, I think that that's probably. If I, I could get into the old nostalgia stuff. Yeah, sure. I really. I, I watch for that. I do like too. They do a lot of these like shorts. And yeah, that's they're cool. really good. That's cool with Max. And around the holiday time right now, it's really cool. There's a lot of like Christmassy stuff like that's so we watch it. So Disney gets me on that one. But I think Apple's HBO the best. HBO and, uh, and Netflix and, it, and Apple. Oh, yeah. I do. Have yeah, that's, that's where I live. That's where I'd say also. Brain.fm plays sounds and music that induce different states of mind, literally changing your brain waves. In other words, if you listen to focus, your brain will get into focused state. Or if you listen to meditate or sleep, you get the picture. Go try them out for 30 days for free. See for yourself. Go to brain.fm forward slash mind pump. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Emma from Iowa. Hi, Emma. Good morning. Hi. How, How are you? Morning. morning. Hey, guys. Uh Long time listener to the podcast. So thanks for all you do. I tell everybody who will listen to tune into you guys. You've made such an impact on my life. And we've been on lots of walks together you guys know nothing about, which is the only <laughs> time this isn't creepy to say to someone. So <laughs> Thank uh, you. <laughs> I have been steady into lifting for at least the last three years into fitness since college. I graduated high school at 215 at 5'7", and I'm currently 145 pounds. The latest DEXA scan says 28% body fat. I'm a person who's always chasing the next goal. I lift weights and move my body because I enjoy it. I'm a mom of three little girls, so life is busy. I have done MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Aesthetic, and at the time this email was currently planning on starting MAPS Split. I have since done that. I have a at-home gym, so that makes things easier. I've taken a big leap this year and signed up to get my personal training certificate. All right. I would really like to do this on the side to make money, but to also help people love weight training as much as I do. I feel like I'm constantly telling my friends, mostly women, in, in fitness and or the intense programs like 75 Hard, I'd love to get away from that message and help people invest in the hard but really easier route. I really do feel like my intentions are good and I could help people. However, and here comes my question after getting windy, sorry. I have such bad imposter syndrome 
while making this leap from a hobby to something somebody pays me for. Everyone around me acknowledges my successes, but I was a fat kid in high school, so I feel like I have a little bit of body dysmorphia I carry around. It's hard for me to feel like I'm at the level to coach someone. How do you get past the feeling of being an imposter when you start to train people? What a, lo- what a great question. question. Yeah, a great this, question. I love this question because it's very common. It, it, it is. It's the most common. And the, the, the secret to this is uh, radical honesty. Mm-hmm. It is being comfortable with who you are. Just like you just described who you are to us and your journey, uh, mm-hmm. where imposter syndrome starts to creep in is when people are not honest or they, they act like they know something that they don't know or they claim to be something that they're not. So, uh, you know, and, and I think trainers get trapped here because they immediately start comparing themselves to their peers and think, oh, why would they want to train with me when they have, you know, Danny over there who's got, you know, 10 certifications and four years experience and he's so smart and they start playing this comparison game and then they feel they need to communicate or talk just the way Dan- versus be you and be yourself and, and, and own where you're at in your journey and that this is, this is new for you, but you have a love and a passion. Your love, your passion comes through when you communicate just like you just did right now. I can see it, I can feel it. And so there's no need for you to pretend like you're something that you're not. It's, it's by the way, everything you right. said is a selling point for That's a potential right. client. I, I, first off, I've never met a trainer ever that didn't uh, struggle with body dysmorphia in some way, shape or form. So that's just a fact, okay? <laughs> Good, no, I guess. <laughs> number two, the trainer who uh, used to be overweight or used to be unathletic or overcame some kind of physical challenge or whatever is going to be, uh, they're going to connect to the average person far easier than the trainer who was born fit and muscular and everything came easy to them. And that's just, yep. that's a fact. And that's a fact. It's a I, superpower. I've seen that uh, um, you know, time and time again. Um, you don't want to be the person, first off, uh, the most successful trainers I've ever worked with, as defined by people who got their clients great success, who had built amazing careers, whose clients loved them, who loved their clients, uh, those trainers were never the smartest ones. They were never the ones that knew the most stuff. They were just the ones that that were able to develop the best relationships. And relationships right. are built on vulnerability and honesty. That's right. Now, as far as knowledge is concerned, always seek knowledge. Right. Okay. So if you love this, I'm sure that's always going to happen. You're always going to be looking to learn more. Stay on that path. You guys are always in the background. Thank of you. Anything I'm doing. So. <laughs> that's great. And, and that's going to keep you, um, it's going to keep it exciting for you. Every time you learn something new, it's going to be, it's going to just reinvigorate you to maybe want to apply it on your clients or to see things a different way. So always seek out more knowledge, but you're never going to be the person that knows everything, but you you do want to be the person that the client can count on who's going to go find the yeah. people or find the information. You want to be the, the trainer where the client comes to you and says, hey, I have this, tr- this challenge or the struggle, and your reply is, let me go see if I can find out for you, or let me go talk to some people that I know, or I think I know somebody who might help you. That's who you want to be. Um, you don't want to be the one that knows everything because you're never going to know everything. Yeah, you want to be the maven. I mean, we, we've talked about that before, but it's just having that mentality that um, you're you're going to figure it out with them. Like you're you're in their corner and you have their best interest in mind. And really, they just want to know that you're listening to them. Like that's that's really what brings them back is is that you're you're concerned about their needs uh, continuously. And whatever you don't know, you can go find out. And and you know a lot more than than you realize going into this. Uh, uh, more so than your average person. So that's something that always drive me. This was a struggle for me for sure too, because I'm not like the most outgoing, like charismatic. I'm like trying, like it was really a struggle for me to, to get out there and, you know, promote myself uh, amongst strangers. And so I had to get over that, but you know, you're, you're going to get through it. You just got to, you know, immerse yourself in it and um, be confident in the fact that you're passionate about this. You're going to help people. And keep, keep in mind, you know, what Justin said, um, most people, you're only going to be able to apply 2% of what you know anyway, because most people don't have a a fitness routine They're You're working with just the basics when it comes to nutrition. Um, Now clients in rehab or people who have really, you know, uh, you know, kind of rare situations, that's where the knowledge stuff can start to kick in, but that makes up a really small percentage of most people's clientele. But I'll, I'll tell you this from an education standpoint. Uh, first off, where are you getting your certification? Uh, you're going through. Are you going through NASM? Yes. Perfect. They're the best. 
So go through NASM. The second certification you should get that I will give you the most value is their Correctional Exercise Specialist Cert. So you're going to get the CPT, which is the first one. That's the Certified Personal Trainer Certification. The next one is the CES Cert. That one is going to give you so much value as a trainer and the most ap uh, applicable knowledge for most people. Now, I will tell you this, and I'll warn you, however hard the CPT cert is, it's 10 times harder. The CES one is 10 times harder, but it is the one that was the most valuable by far that I ever did. You do those two right there, and then you combine it with your experience as you continue working with people, you're going to do great. Or you yeah. combine it with our course. Uh, that, the next thing I would tell you to do is our course is very much so centered around the building the business part. Right. So yeah. I think the NASM will take Keeping care of the uh, practical uh, education and knowledge around training people and corrective exercise, what Sal recommended. And then the actual building your business, scaling, communication with clients, signing contracts, all that stuff. That's what we built our course around. I think the two of those. But- I want, and I don't know, Emma, if you've ever heard me tell my story of being thrusted into a leadership role at 21 years old, where I was the youngest, least experienced, least educated, and now I'm leading 15 trainers, all more experienced, all more educated than I was. And so it was just, it was a crazy learning experience for me to go through that. And what, and obviously to get to that place, I was quickly the, the top trainer in our area and the way I got there was not by being the most knowledgeable, but was every time I got hit with a question, which by the way, every day I'm getting hit with questions from trainers or clients, and every day I don't have the answers. But I was I would be so quick to be like, oh my God, let me talk to Sal. He's the best when it comes to these stuff like that, and I'll and I'll let you know what he says. Or oh man, then I'll uh, let me I'll meet with Justin because he's just like this mobility guy. He's taught me everything about. I was so comfortable with who I was and okay with saying things like that. And think of uh, how I explain that about those trainers. You have us in your corner like that. So if there's ever something that you get hit with that you're not 100% sure or 100% confident because you've already taught it and done it, you defer to, you know what, let me let me look look at some of that stuff with my boys over at Mind Pump. Those guys are brilliant. They've taught, like, don't be afraid to give that credit to somebody else and because that's what they pay you for. They pay you to get their answers. They don't give a shit if it came from you or Tom, Dick, or Harry. They just want the right <laughs> yeah. They want the right answer. And if you're not 100% confident in what that right answer is, defer. Defer, but tell them, I got you. Don't worry. By tomorrow what or later really, on today. What and, they really want is a guide. That's, that's right. They and, want a guide. And then you, and then, and it's okay. And I, we always encourage trainers, use all of our stuff. Use yep. askmindpup.com every time you get a question and see how we would communicate that answer and see what videos we have to share and use all those tools and resources for you to look like the genius, even though you're you're deferring all the stuff. <laughs> Emma, like, Emma, a couple things that I think will help you. Do you have Prime Pro? Because that's a very valuable oh, yeah. uh, program for yeah, training. I, to get you that. I do have that one. Yes, Good. I do. Do you have Maps Prime? I do. Yes. Okay, let me think. What other programs <laughs> do you have? Let me think. Because there's programs that some of them symmetry, are symmetry. Yeah. symmetry. Do you have symmetry? Same, same thing. I don't know that I have symmetry. All right, well, let me send you that because that, that's one. some good workout programming that I think you'll value that you'll you'll benefit from as a trainer. And then also, you just called in uh, at perfect timing. We're going to air this later, so when this airs, this webinar will be done. But tonight, four p.m. Pacific, Adam and I are doing a free webinar for trainers talking about how to manage and build a business through the holidays uh, as a trainer. So the holiday season is a very tough time for trainers and coaches. So go to trainerwebinar.com. And you can attend the live webinar or you can watch the replay. I suggest watching it live because we typically do some fun uh, giveaways and stuff. And then every other month, it's free education. Every other month, Adam and I are going to do a webinar for coaches and trainers. And it's all free. And it's literally just to teach trainers and coaches how to build their business, how to be better trainers, like all, everything. And we're going to do that awesome. ongoing and at some point, hopefully every month. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's every other month. So go to yeah, trainerwebinar.com and sign up. It will send you symmetry because I think that program awesome. will, help, will help you. Yeah. Thank you. All right, Emma. You got Emma. it. Thanks for calling in. Good Thanks luck. for following us for so yeah. long. I appreciate all you guys do. You got it. That's a common with trainer. The most common thing is imposter syndrome. Oh, yeah. Because you think when you get into the space, you think that you have to be the fittest, uh, rippedest, smartest, mm -hmm. like, you know, god of fitness. Uh, first of all, that person doesn't exist. But second, uh, the most effective trainers were almost never the most knowledgeable. They were the ones that knew how to build relationships. That was it.
Yeah. And they you didn't you can't even apply all that knowledge to 99% of people anyway. Most people need yeah, to learn how to They struggled. Squat. The ones that came in that had all the education and uh know-how and or they looked the part and like were very much, you know, fit and ripped and shredded had a really hard time relating with their clients yep. and, and really, you know, um thinking their way through that, uh, how to how to be able to contact and, and be able to, you know, make ways with our clients. I didn't realize that this was a superpower of mine until way later because so many trainers would communicate the imposter syndrome thing. And I thought, man, I don't really, what, what, what did I do to get by that? And, and it really is radical honesty yep. is yeah. when you're in it. And that with the imposter syndrome creeps in when you are talking about something you don't know about yep. or you haven't experienced. And of course that's going to happen at the beginning because you're getting all different types of people. And of course you're going to see situations that you haven't seen yet. You're brand new. Yeah, I don't care even if you are well-read, that's gonna happen to every trainer. And the ones that are most comfortable with admitting that and being okay and comfortable with saying that, I don't know, or, oh wow, I haven't trained a client that has that, but I'll find the answer out, or I know somebody who has the answer, that's all they want. Yeah. And the, the the more comfortable you are with saying that, the easier this imposter syndrome is. You won't have it because no. you're be, it's when you are not honest with yourself. It's when they perceive that's when you it in a way in. that's false. Right. That's right. Yeah. That's when that creeps Don't in. Don't up a front. And if you just own who you are and where you're at in your journey and understand that that will not, not only hinder you, it will make you better because people love that radical honesty yeah. and authenticity. So be that person. And I, I used to literally, I wouldn't know the answer to something the client would ask me and then when they left and i had time i would read about it learn Same. about it and then yeah. i would find people i would talk to them and then the next time they came to see me i'd tell them hey by the way i looked that up I here's what i learned here's what i learned i had a friend that does this they work on this this is what they recommended this reminds me of this thing over here mm -hmm. here's what we're going to do and, and people just loved it it's also a great way to be liked by your peers uh, because in the, trainers are so uh -huh. ego driven and scarcity mindset that they don't tell each other, they don't talk to each other, they don't ask each other questions. That if you are that trainer who gives those train other trainers credit and asks them questions, yeah. people love to give you the answer and be the smart one. So I just re I leaned into that. I knew that. I knew that like Sal loves to answer all those questions. So instead of me trying to bullshit my way, I'm gonna go ask Sal, and then he feels good about telling me and teaching me. And then you also empower the client. Like it's just a it's a win all the way around if you can just get past the not being yourself. Yeah, be by, yourself. And by the way, the, the, because this is going to air after we've done our webinar, I think trainerwebinar.com is always the website you could check. Yeah. And it's every other month. So if you're a trainer listening, they're free and we're going to teach you stuff for free. It's our way of yeah, giving super back. Super valuable so content. Check it out. Our next caller is James from Florida. James, how's it going? How are you doing, James? What's happening? Thanks, guys, for having me today. You got it. So, hey, I'll just go ahead and dive right into my question, if you don't mind. But first, accolades to all of you guys, the revolution, fitness revolution. I love it. And, you know, I really have to say a shout out to Doug. I know he's keeping you guys straight and appreciate <laughs> yeah, everything he's doing. He certainly doing. does. Without <laughs> Doug, we'd be in jail. Yep. Okay, well, yeah, we all have those guys. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, so I, I'll give you a little background. I'm a 53-year-old man. Um, I really just didn't took up strength training till about I was actually 40. Um Found your podcast about two years ago and then switched more specifically to uh, strength training as you guys prescribe versus, uh, let's say, functional fitness, CrossFit, of course. Um, recently, Adam, I've been watching your journey and I've kind of come into some of the struggles that you had, not the injuries, I, I thank God, but uh, some of the struggles with traveling. I travel one week to two weeks every month. Um, currently, I'm finishing up phase three of anabolic. Uh, however, I've stayed in each phase longer than the three weeks, um, about four weeks, and actually phase one, probably did more like five weeks. I was really getting comfortable with the heavy weights and a really long rest. I had to train myself just to uh, enjoy that. But when I'm at home, I do the normal programming, nothing odd there. But then when I travel, I find the best gym I can find, or the best hotel with the best gym, and I use the home version and, and work through that. So I go back and forth between the home version and the regular version. Um, and then I modify as as I can. Some places don't have dips, so I'll use the treadmills, get in between the treadmills and do dips there. So kind of like, I have kind of two questions. One, did I really get the best out of anabolic because of the traveling? Probably better if I was one place the whole time. Um, but I did get significantly stronger. I did lose body uh, fat. And then the uh, other one, I what, what should I look at next with that kind of travel schedule? I do want to say I bought the um, uh, anabolic or the... Uh, Maps anywhere. I, I tried it. 
it just seemed a little easy. I don't want to say was this not a lot of volume or a lot of um, for me to really dig my teeth into, and that's why I went back to the anabolic. Yeah, good question. <clears throat> so could you have gotten better results had you not traveled? I mean, probably. Uh, travel is um, not conducive to fitness. You know, you're, you're, you're sleeping in a different place. There's time changes. You're eating out. That being said, I mean, you did great. You did really, really well. Uh, and I'm assuming your travel is related to work, so it's probably something you can't, you know, get away from anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think you did really well. And now, a lot of people get stuck in NAPS Anabolic, and, and I, get, I understand why. It, it's a great general strength muscle-building program. Typically, for most people, it produces very pronounced immediate results. And so people can get stuck there, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you not to because – Although the program has a lot of strengths, there are some weaknesses. There's no perfect program. And one of the weaknesses of MAPS Anabolic is it trains you primarily in one plane of, uh, of movement. You're not doing really any unilateral type exercise. There's no lateral stability. There's very little rotation. And so what will end up happening over time as you continue to get stronger and stronger in MAPS Anabolic is you may start to run into aches and pains and, and, and injuries and start to develop dysfunction. Mm -hmm. So I, I definitely don't think, I, I know it's not the program to stay in all the time. It's a great program. I love it. But I think uh, good follow-ups are like symmetry. If you're traveling, suspension is great. I think MAP suspension is a great program, and you can make it very difficult by adjusting the angles. Yeah. Um, and it's a you know closed chain movements. It's body weight. It's uh, it it, it works on stability differently than other programs. So that would be the program for travel. Personally, it would be suspension. All you got to do is take your suspension trainer with you. I love that. I, I, I'll echo that. I love suspension trainer. For the, it also addresses some of the things that we're we're lacking if we're doing anabolic. But I, I mean, map, if I could choose the program, it'd be maps performance when you're home, yeah. and then uh, maps suspension when you're when you're traveling. I think that will. Now that doesn't mean you have to stay there forever. I just think that on a, on an annual basis, you want to interrupt the maps anabolic training with at least a one one time running through like maps performance just to address those things. Otherwise, like Sal's saying, another way to say it is that you are building a drag race car right now and you're eventually in life going to have to take corners. And so if you, and right now you're doing a good job of building that horsepower up, but sooner or later it's going to be real fucking fast. And sooner or later you're going to have to take a turn and you're going to take, and you're, and that's where shit goes wrong or you get hurt or, you, you know, and I'm a perfect example of that. So it's like the me <laughs> preaching the choir here, right? So, you know, obviously let me be the example of what not to do. Okay. James. And that that's, what's going on is that too much horsepower, too fast in one direction should have been addressing all the other stuff. And so, uh, yeah, don't be an idiot like me. Make sure that you address that. And you only need to do it about once once a year of either running a either map symmetry or um, a map, mass performance, and then you can get back to anabolic. Because if anabolic is really working well and is conducive for your life, I, I like clients. You don't don't you don't you don't have to uh, fix what's uh, or what's not broken. So go ahead and use it. But just know that we want to make sure. Once a year, we interrupt that yeah. with a good program that challenges range of motion and moving in different planes and unilateral work and and performance and symmetry does that. Yeah. Okay. The only thing I would add to that is like, okay, if if, if you're that kind of guy and you you obviously sounded like you did CrossFit and you're like, you know, you want to challenge every now and then, you try our old time strength program. Oh, oh be, there you I go. I challenge a, you to a, do that. It's really difficult. It takes you through every single plane of motion. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, you're going to have a doozy with that one. I like that. I like yeah. that. I like James, when you travel, how long do you travel for and how often? Uh, it's So it'll be like a full week, at least once a month. Sometimes it'll be two times or two weeks in a row, but not often, but at least once a week a month I'm, I'm on the road. And it's a seven-day block at that point in time. You know what? To be honest with you, James, like your age following – Maps anabolic. If if every three weeks you took a week and did suspension, that would probably you'd be able to stay It'd in anabolic as long as you want. Week, yeah. yeah, I mean you'd be able okay. to keep That'd keep be it. A perfect rest either that's yeah. out or, uh, and we can we'll give you mass performance and suspension. So yeah, both of them. The other thing we could do is during that week you do just all the mobility work yeah. uh, in in performance. That's oh, a, yeah. So literally, while you're since you're in a hotel anyways, you give yourself that one week of this is the week where I do all my body weight mobility movements in my hotel you'll room. Be, you'll be stronger when you get and back. that will address all that really well. And then you go right back to your anabolic yep. when you're home. Uh, that would really serve you too. So that's also a cool option we yep. could do too. Yeah. That's, that's that's I, I appreciate that. Sounds makes 
plenty since like a semi D load, but not quite weak. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Exactly. That's right. Exactly. So, yeah. I, so well, that's, that's actually perfect out of all of the options, I think. So okay. I'm assuming, do you not have uh, uh, performance or suspension? Because we, we'll send those over to you if you don't I have I do one. not have either of those. I have that. I, I have uh, anabolic. I have the Pro, uh, Prime Pro, and I have 15 and anywhere, but I don't have either one of those two. Okay, All right, cool. we'll send them to you. Yeah, we'll send those to you, James. That's really, pre I appreciate it. And hey, uh, Adam, to answer your question, I've got plenty of time to watch the uh, the podcast on the airplane. So I'm keeping up with both of you guys. Oh yeah. Oh nice. <laughs> right, right on. Right on. Right. Good That's deal, good man. to hear. Thank you, James. Appreciate the support. Hey, brother. I appreciate your time guys. Have a great one. You Thanks, got James. it. Take it easy. Thanks. You know, you know the irony of, of that is that if everybody lifted hard three days a week, three weeks out of the month and, and one, one week did a, like a deload, we would all do really well. That's like the sweet that. spot. If I could Honestly, do that, yeah, I can't do that because I'm, you know, I want to go to the gym. But if I did yeah, that, it would be people get kind of yeah bored with it. But well, it's, the, it's so good for you. The hardest part about that is that when you're off the week like that, it's the getting right back on the horse, right? Because yeah. you get used to like ta taking off, and that's always the hardest is when you've been off for a week is that first day that's back. True. And so you, you lose momentum. But that's the hardest part about taking that bring it back. that week off. And so that's why I think I love the idea of just like doing the mobility days yeah. from performance during that week and you you don't need anything but your hotel room to do all that That's stuff right, totally. and then he'll still be in the routine of doing something every day so it won't feel like he's mm -hmm. completely on vacation or taking off working out and then gets right back to his strength training doing really well it's cyber monday the cyber monday sale is happening right now all maps workout programs and all maps workout program bundles are 60 percent off go check them out go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code cyber monday for that discount all right, back to the show. Our next caller is Kyle from Texas. What's up, Kyle? How you doing, Kyle? How's it's it going, man? man? Doing good. How are you? We're good. doing good, dude. How can we help you? Good. Well, I, I'm just going to get started off with my question. Read the email I sent you. Is that okay? Yeah, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, basically, so I'm a I'm a dad of eight children that are uh, 12 and under. Holy uh, Full-time insurance agent and a pastor. So um, we don't have a lot of free time. Um, and I've, I've been working out just about 15 minutes a day for the last maybe six months or so. Um, and then about two months ago, uh, I was entered into a race my brother wanted to do. And so he entered me in as well, some, some brother. But uh, I, started, I was listening to you guys talking about protein intake and everything. And I started following, you know, getting 150, 180 grams of protein a day, just close. My body weight was 205 at the time. Um, and, and thanks to you, I gained about 15 pounds before the race. So that was, that was, uh, didn't make the race easier, but <laughs> it was muscle. Um, nothing, nothing went up as far as clothes size or anything. Um, I could definitely tell that, that I had gained muscle, a lot of strength gains. Um, I used to work out regularly, but of course, you know, with kids and everything else coming up, uh, that kind of fell off. But my real question is. When we did this race, uh, I was able to run about 12 miles, uh, it was, you know, walking and running, alternating. Uh, but I, I really want to get to the point where I could just lightly jog, you know, three to five miles without getting crazy out of breath. And so I guess what I'm, what I'm trying to figure out is what would be the best way to, to make it so that I don't lose muscle mass, uh, but, but I can still increase that endurance to where you know, it's, it's not a big deal. I'm not looking for record times or anything, but just to be able to have the fitness level to just be able to say, Hey, I'm going to go for a run and run for three to five miles. Oh, yeah. great question. Run performance. First of all, eight kids. Yeah. Wow. God bless you, man. <laughs> That's amazing. Yes. <laughs> Good for you, dude. Uh, all right. So if you can run, <clears throat> if you can run a mile, a mile and a half quickly, then you'll be able to cruise three miles or maybe even five miles. <clears throat> really, it's just about practice. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you ran a mile three days a week and just didn't even increase the distance, just tried to get better with your time slowly over weeks and weeks and weeks, then you should be able to pick up and just run and cruise a three to five mile at a, at a slow pace. You should be able to do that if you can run a mile pretty quickly. So okay. I, I would just practice. And a mile doesn't take much. You know, you, you take 20 minutes out of your day. So I would practice, I would just practice getting better at running a mile a few days a week. Now, as far as muscle is concerned, you know, if you don't push it too hard, you're probably going to be okay. But I mean, it's a trade-off. It's always a trade-off. Um, you know, it sounds like you want more stamina and endurance. 
Um, if you're not chasing so much endurance, like right. running a marathon where you're going to sacrifice a ton of muscle. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. You'd be fine. If you're yeah. a, a mile can get, you can get a mile down to eight minutes. Mm -hmm. So obviously you're probably not going to start at eight minutes, but you can get it down to that. And eight minutes of, you know, relatively intense cardio is not a lot of cardio. And that's not going to be this massive endurance signal. Right. That's going to tell your body, Oh, we don't need muscle, especially if you do it. And then you go into your strength training. So that's kind of what I would do is every, if you've already disciplined yourself to do this 15 to 20 minutes of lifting every day, is I would just run a mile before I do that, and and every day I'll try every day that I do that I try and improve it just slightly, you know. So if at the very first time you just go at a very easy pace just to get it completed, figure out what your time is. Let's say it's you know twelve minutes the first time. Well, next time you do it, do try and do it uh, under twelve, just yeah. barely, you know, get under twelve, and then after that, just try and get under fifteen to thirty seconds, and just keep cutting it by. 15 to 30 seconds until you're down to where you're running a nice eight minute mile or less. And if you can run an eight minute mile, you can definitely run five miles. You'll yeah. be, you'll be now fine. I'll say this, Kyle. Um, one thing, one caveat is really uh, emphasize your technique on your running. Okay. It's one of the most common ways that people develop overuse injuries is that they just start to inject running into the routine. And if your technique, if your running technique isn't great, and you're running a lot, you will start to develop like knee pain, back pain, hip, yeah. hip pain, that yeah. kind of stuff. So really just, you know, I, I wouldn't even, I would just start out by just perfecting the technique of the run and see if you can make it feel good and then slowly over time get faster. But really the technique is the most important yeah. thing. Would you consider like a, <clears throat> a, are you running on a treadmill or outside? What would you be doing? Well, it, it would be running outside. What I'm, what I'm really doing now what I'm starting to do, I did in the past, is following kind of the, I don't know if you've heard of Phil Maffetone, um, kind of, a, it's like zone three training, where you just slowly work up to where you can keep your heart rate, you know, for, for me, it would be around 135 to 145, um, until you can, and you slowly increase your speed at that heart rate, so you're not really pushing the heart rate. I think that should have muscle sparing effects. That's good. That's good yeah, stuff. and it's a shorter period. Like we said, a mile is not, it, it's not a long Run, but really, I really, really want to emphasize technique, though, Kyle, because mm -hmm. what happens is a lot of people okay. they'll, they'll focus on their heart rate, they'll focus on the perceived exertion, and we just take for granted that we just oh I'm just gonna go run. But if you haven't been running uh, for a while and this isn't something that you practice often, then your technique is probably off. It's probably not good, and it's it's probably not bad enough to where you'll run a right. few times and hurt. But over the next weeks and months, if you continue to do this. You may start to notice issues. Did you uh, notice anything yeah. after your run with your brother? Uh, no, I, I didn't. Okay, I That's didn't. Good. I didn't know. Now, I I will say I I did run for a while, probably six or seven years ago. I ran regularly. Okay, and good. so I I'm kind of a nerd about things, so I I would buy mm. six or seven books and read them before oh, I good. <laughs> You're good, before then. I do anything. So. Oh, I would I would consider too like it's okay, not not going too long with your running and and really start obviously what they're talking about and easing it in. Uh, and kind of ramping yourself up, but then once you're at a level where you could, you could do some sprints, you can do you know a little bit more intensive bouts where you undulate that. So you're you're undulating it. You're getting yeah. like a good sprint. You're getting a, a cool down period. You do another sprint, cool down period. That's like strength training. So it's just like strength training. It's more anaerobic. You get the same effects. You're gonna find that that translates really well to uh, endurance and, and durability. Yeah. So. You know, that's a consideration. Uh, one of the main things, too, Okay, though, so as long as the runs aren't too long, it shouldn't affect with the, um, you know, the, the muscle growth or anything like that. That's Even right. doing it two or three times a week. That's right. right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, this is all what you're presenting your body to respond to. And if it's think, fast twitch, it's it's more likely you're going to hold on to muscle. Think, think of like a, like a pie chart of the time spent strength training and the time spent actually running. And you want a majority of that pie, strength training, and just a small sliver of that is, is running. And that's more likely to keep you ho hanging on the muscle. If you start rivaling the amount of time that you are running to what you are strength training, I mean, you're definitely sending a signal more towards endurance because you spend significantly more time, right? And that's like that would be like if you ran MAPS 15, where you do 15-minute workouts, five, six days a week, but then you run for an hour, three days a week. Like, you're, you're a runner more than you are a strength trainer, and you're mm -hmm. going to get more of an adaptation towards endurance and running than you are building muscle. Yeah.
keep mobilizing your ankles, your hips. Just okay, that keep that sense. keep that routine established because you're going to find, you know, even just doing this uh, more frequently, it's going to put stress and tension there. So to make sure you're nice and and stable around those joints is going to be crucial. What's our what was our what's the time frame in Maps Cardio? Do you remember what the day how many days a week and how long is this training? I want to say it was 4. 4, yeah, it sounds yeah. about right. Cuz that wouldn't be a bad program. He's got a limited time. Wouldn't be. That's yeah, why. He that's why I asked you the time. Yeah, dude. I just said that. Oh, you mean time? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You like how long the workout yeah, yeah, yeah. is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they're they're like an hour. Are they? Yeah, forty five minutes. Oh, an hour. Okay, I don't remember that at all. Oh, yeah, then Matt's fifteen is the way to go. Yeah. Still, yeah. yeah. Stick with Matt fifteen. You're good with that. And then you said you had what other? Did you have Prime Prime Pro? Kyle, do you have Prime? I Prime I, Prime? I don't have either of those or Mass fifteen actually. Oh oh what oh, oh okay. Kyle, we'll, we'll send you Mass fifteen. You need yeah. Mass fifteen first. Yeah. yeah, you need Mass fifteen. You need Mass fifteen, and then I did a, okay. a, a I did a webinar on mobility uh, at primeprowebinar.com. 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 Uh, that mobility session, especially the okay. the lower body stuff. It should be a, a major emphasis for you uh, to prepare yourself for running. And that's all what S Justin was saying. It's hip and ankle stuff. Like that's where you want to make sure you're really mobilized and primed before you go on your runs. And so take the take the mobility stuff that I do in that webinar for the lower body and apply that to yourself in conjunction with MAPS 15. That That's a good, a good recipe for you. Absolutely. All right, Kyle, we'll send that over to or you. Or just chase your kids around all day. That's what I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's the cardio, chasing them around. Yeah. Yep. All right, Kyle. All right, Kyle. Take it easy, man. All right. Thank you so much. Yep. Right. You know, I want to say too, there's a there's a there's a big difference between running three to five miles at a time regularly and being able to run three to five miles. Uh -huh. So like yeah. so like you know, running a mile three days a week. Uh, you'll if you do that fast, you'll be able to run a, a, a three miles or five miles if you wanted to. Yeah. But you won't be able to do it every uh, all the time. Yeah. And the reason why I'm saying that is there's different kinds of training because people people will think that well I need to run if I want to run three to like five match miles. It. No, 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 not at all. If you just want to be able to, mm -hmm. um, one third of the, the the distance is plenty. Totally. If you could do it quickly to be able to do that. In other words, you could if you could run five miles fast, you'll be able to cruise 15 miles for the most part. And it's way more muscle sparing. Yes. Way. Yes. Our next caller is Thomas from Ohio. What's up, Thomas? What's happening, dude? Yo, this is crazy. Wow. Hi, guys. <laughs> yeah. How's it? Nice to meet you. You too. <laughs> How can I help you? Um, well, I'm a new trainer. I'm like about seven months in. And honestly, there's this one client that I have that's giving me a lot of trouble. Um... He's 17 years old, and I'll just run through my email, but I kind of summarized a lot, so hopefully it'll move smoother. Um, I'm feeling very stuck with a client who has a lot going on physically, and I'm just not sure how to prioritize everything to help him progress. Um, his squat form is generally okay, but he has like lumbar spine issues that he can't achieve, like this anterior pelvic tilt. Like he can't, he can't, like when I say stick his butt out, he just doesn't stick his butt out. And, and when he squats down, he keeps on having that curve. And even when I cue him to adjust, his spine just stays in flexion. And, he, and he's also very flat-footed. Um, his back strength, he struggles to connect with his back muscles. But surprisingly, his chest isn't dominant mover in chest press either. Like, like sometimes he would say that he feels like his scapula is the prime mover and that inherently doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. <laughs> um, but yeah. Yeah. Um, he often leads with his chest. Uh, he often leads with his shoulders, I should say. Even when I adjust his arm angles and despite different approaches, just like pre-exhausting his chest. Like I've even done the thing where like you take the stick and you like press, but you don't like move the hand, but you think about pressing the hands together and you're just going through that move. I tried that and he just doesn't seem to like connect to that. Um, he seems to have a shoulder imbalance. One tends to be uh, sit higher than the other, which, which shoulder it varies, but making it difficult to pinpoint like what's going on there. Um, maybe, yeah, any, and, and his coordination issues. He has trouble following basic mobility cues, like when I did pigeon to kneeling lunge transition. You guys, 
does, does that make sense? The yeah. pigeon to kneeling. Okay. Yeah. Um, he also tend, he like, the way that your ankle is out and in front of you at 90, as if it was a 90, 90, when you're doing the pigeon, he doesn't do that 90 degree angle. He like more so just sits his pelvis on his foot. And I try to cue him. Well, let's try, let's try to take that out a little bit. And he, he doesn't, it's weird. Um, and, uh, he also tends to hold weights in a weird way. Like, like if I was to have him do a, uh, like a, like a chest row, on, like on the machine, a, a back row, I should say, he will grab the handles in an asymmetrical way naturally because it just feels better to him to do that. And I, I, I know that that's not what I want. And I'd always try to say, okay, let's grab it up the middle. Let's really try to engage the lats there. And he's also has instability problems. So when I say do some Bulgarian split squats or anything like that, he has his back heel lifts, the knee travels too far forward, and his and he leans side to side uh, to compensate him coming up. There's just I just feel like there's a lot going on here that I really Rubik's don't know cube. how to tackle. Yeah, and I was never ever good at solving Rubik's cubes, so <laughs> I really don't know how to how to approach this. I, I'm, I'm I, assuming I he's feel really so lost and he's seventeen. I'm assuming he's really overweight too, right? I'm just guessing that. Is he really overweight? Mm -mm. Actually, he's not that. He's not that overweight. Oh, no. interesting. Um, no. I should have had. I, sh I should have gotten his like like in body sheet. But well, I don't. I don't need to know. I just I thought, I I thought you might. That. I thought that was part of the it's challenge. A, so he's just really. He's he, really unstable, he's and he's some weak. Of, some of the most unstable. Functional, yeah. You know, when you tr when you train kids and older population, this is when you're going to run into um, these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you told us all the yeah. movement issues because when you say one movement issue. Then I start to think, okay, though there's one area here, lumbar spine, but you went through everything. Yeah. And so that tells me that he's yeah. just generally disconnected yeah. regressive from yeah, his exactly. body. He doesn't have good stability, doesn't have good body awareness, yeah, which well. which is actually <clears throat> not uncommon with kids these days. Okay. It's not uncommon with, with teenage kids, especially if they play they spent a lot of the time playing video games or not playing sports and stuff like that. You're going to see a lot of this. They don't really live in their body. You have to regress, 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 regress. Map okay. symmetry, bro. <laughs> so, so like you mentioned like pigeon to kneeling to lunge way too much. You're going to regress. You know, you mentioned 90, 90 can't bring his leg out. I'm going to do a half 90, 90 on a bench. Yeah. I'm going to have him lay Four on his benches. back and yeah. I'm going to put his leg in position. I'm going to hold it in position. Yep. Uh, 90% of the workout is going to be regressions, mobility movements, and connecting, and yep. isometrics. 10% yeah. of the workout is going to be one exercise. The, the, work, the training session would look like this. I'm going to do mobility, isometrics, connecting, slow. This doesn't work, regress. This doesn't work, regress. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, if I have time, we'll practice one exercise. I'm probably not going to have him do a bilateral squat because he can't. I'm probably going to do like a, a like a split stance something mm -hmm. with him holding onto a pole or holding onto a stick. Yeah. And all we're going to do, all, so yeah, a good regression would be like you get him in a split stance. I would put a pad on the floor and I would tell my client, I just want you to slowly kneel to the floor. It's I, almost like doing a box squat. I love what Justin suggested. A reverse lunge with a suspension yeah. trainer is great for someone like this because a reverse lunge is much easier for someone to get back into. There's a little bit of instability component so we can change some train some stability, but he has the support of the suspension trainer and you can regress I'm, and progress. I'm going to guess that that's probably too far. No. I think, yeah, I think Bro, stepping back, I think stepping back, knowing where to put his foot and how to hold himself no on way. handles is going to be That is easier than a lunge which you suggested no, no, no. forward. So the lunge that I'm talking about You're is, holding a pole. I know you're just saying. holding something. Mm -hmm. you're, he's going to put his feet in position. You're going to put a pat on the floor and you're going to say, just kneel. Um, and and usually, anyway, the point is you're going to have to regress as much as you kneeling can. to that pad. That's it. You just kneel down to the pad and then stand up and then let's just get in position again. Kneel back down slowly. It's a negative. But nonetheless, the whole point here is uh, you need to regress, <clears throat> regress, regress. Yeah. And there's no regression that's totally. inappropriate. So, you're going to have to take exercises and movements and break them down into pieces. I mean, you could take you map symmetry. Do you have, Thomas, you have map symmetry? I do not. Okay, so that's a good place for you to start. The front, the first phase is all isometrics. Yeah. 
So, uh, you know, bird dog, okay. movements like that, prone cobra, movements like that. I mean, yeah. you're going to do a lot of movements that are isometric contractions, like Sal saying, the whole 90% of the workout is isometric and mobility type work. Prone, supine, so, you know, on the stomach, on the back, you're going to be up in, uh, you know, split position, you're going to be bilateral, uh, you're going to have him, you know, squat and uh, left to right so we get some lateral stability. Like, you got to really think of it like you're training him how to walk. You're training him how to sit down in, in a chair. Like, you know, as very basic as that is. Like, and if you could set it up in a way where he holds and sustains mm -hmm. these positions that he has the most instability with, you have him go through the movement, you hold it, and we try our best to connect like connection is not there yet. So we need to spend all the time there is boring as it sounds like to present this to him. Like this is going to do so yeah. much more for him. A, a lot of this is not going to resemble a workout. Uh, you know What I mean by that is what you might consider exercises, traditional exercises. He probably can't do a lot of different movements. I mean, you may, uh, uh, he may just sit and extend his arms above his head with no weight. And you're just trying to teach him how to straighten his arms without, overarching or causing any, you know, any, any discrepancies with no weight whatsoever. Uh, so you, you just have to keep thinking to yourself of regression each mm -hmm. time. How do I regress this more? How do I regress this more? How can I organize this movement in a way where he can, he can do this mm -hmm. and there's no, no regression is inappropriate. You talked about him not being able to really control his pelvic either. Did you have you tried back presses with him where yeah. he, he lays back on his back and his knees bent at 45 degrees and then have him press his back against the ground? I haven't had him do that, no. That's a great exercise because gravity will help support that and move that, and you're teaching him how to engage engage that core yeah. and, and move back and forth, anterior and posterior in the, in the pelvic. Yeah. So That's step one, and then you add the, the hip bridge after that yeah. when you hold the top. I, I, I love isometrics, and I do really love the suspension trainer here. There's a lot of things I can envision right now I would do with yeah, this you can kid do a lot with, that. with a suspension trainer that I could really regress it and make it really easy and slowly step him up, and he's got that support while we're doing that. I can think of a <laughs> exercise for every body part I can start to core, and that's kind of the one exercise we do. So the one exercise – let's say, is that either the, the stationary lunge, like Sal said, or it's the step back one like I talked about. And that's the main – we're going to work – the first 30 to 40 minutes is working up to that movement and then just doing three to five sets of that movement, and then that's your workout, bro. You know, you know what this is? This is a gift for you. This client is going to teach you so much yep. going forward. Like This is your opportunity to really dig in uh, to the education piece of it and try and crack this code. Like I've had a couple clients like that that challenged me for years. Made you way better. Way better. Yeah. So, you know, as, as frustrating as it is, like thinking you don't have the answers, like you'll get the answers, keep educating yourself, keep watching, you know, videos and, and go through courses. And uh, yeah, this is, it's one of those, the, the general population, uh, you, you never know what you're going to get. And it, it always surprised me. So uh, if you just have that kind of mentality that like, you'll see like little improvements and that's a big deal for this person. Mm -hmm. So just, just stay there. Are you Thomas, are you in our course yet? I, I was there with, when you guys announced that I was on the live stream, but I have, I don't have the funds to get on that course yet. Unfortunately. Well, watch our live, our free webinars at least. Yeah. At least make sure you're showing up to all the free webinars we do. We got one tonight at, at 4 PM Pacific standard time. And uh, and it's already on my schedule. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, good. good. So make sure you're, you're in there. And as soon as you do have the fun, and by the way, too, Doug can work out a payment plan for you if you have to. But that that community, this is the type of stuff that the trainers are engaging and sharing and helping each other too. So aside yeah. from the course being extremely valuable for your business, you're also in a community of other like-minded trainers that are all helping and support each other with it. And this is not going to be the last time that you have yeah. a confusing There's problem a lot to, to solve. unpack here and you need yeah support for, oh, sure. So, for sure. So when you can, I would love to see you in there because this is the type of stuff that we help trainers out with. And this is not easy. So, but like just, Justin, just, go ahead. Just to, just to confirm, was that you saying the Facebook private form or was that the course that you were referring to? When because you, I, I'm, I'm going to get both eventually. When you buy sure, the course, but. you actually get access into the forum. Yeah, you get a few months for free in our free oh, training. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. All right, dude. We'll send you symmetry. Yeah, we'll send cool. symmetry over. All right. Wow. Thank you, guys. This was a little bit unreal to, to do this.
I've been listening to you guys for a while. Thomas, I actually would like to... I'd like to... Everything you guys... I want to hear back from you. I want to hear back from you after you've applied some of the stuff with this kid. Yeah, I'd like to hear how it goes. Okay, cool. All right. Thank you guys for all that you do. Uh, As a new trainer, I feel like... I the years and experience and wisdom that you guys have is very beneficial for someone new like me to just intake. So thank you guys so very much you got for it, all man. that you guys do. You got it, man. Thank you. Right on. Stay right. with it, man. Yep. You're going to do great. All right. I'll see you guys in the next pod. All right, man. You got it. I think it would be really beneficial for trainers to go volunteer uh, with physical therapists. Oh, so yeah. An idea. Oh, my God. Because uh, this was a learning curve for me. And that's why I kept telling him regression. I, I had no idea. I, I thought regression was like lighter I, weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This other exercise that's traditional, that's easier. And then I'd get a client who was elderly who couldn't lay down. Mm-hmm. We couldn't put them on their back because their posture was so bad that I'd have to set up pillows for their head. And it's, so, I, oh, my God, we can't do any, yeah. any supine you exercises. You elevate a lot of these exercises. No, we can't do, do a, a shoulder press because they can't even extend their arm yeah. above their head yeah, or. Yeah. What do I do for the lower body? And so you just, you regress, regress, regress. But the, the foundations of strength training are the same. You apply progressive overload. You improve ranges of motion. So wherever you regress from, you can progress from. And that's when the person gets stronger and improves. Yeah, you know, if he gets a chance to listen to this portion mm-hmm. of it too, uh, you know, Thomas, the way that you really challenge this kid is to intensify the isometrics, right? So you're going to teach him a movement. It's already going to be difficult enough to get the kid to do the movement. Mm-hmm. If you know you're doing a really good job, you'll, he'll sweat. He will sweat from holding those positions and intensifying yeah. it and getting better. And that is the, the foundation of you setting up for all the exercises. Those that, yeah, muscles. The fact that he can go through like a bird dog, fully extend and contract and, and do an isometric hold in that position to where he's kind of shaking like a leaf for like five seconds and then reset. And That's then do it again. That is how you progress right now. And then when he's doing all that really well, we can start going into movements. But I do want to highlight something that I'm proud of this kid for doing this. This is something that we talk to our community of trainers all the time. And I, it's, it's, a, it's a lost art. The asking questions when you're a trainer or be, or admitting, I don't know what to fucking do. Yeah. Versus yeah, yeah. just making this kid do a bunch of bullshit that's not going to help yeah. him. Like, can you imagine just throwing this kid on, on a bunch machines? of machines? Yeah, no. You yeah. know, like, because you can't do these things. You're like, oh, fuck it. I'll just put him on a chest press machine. I'll just put him on a bicep curl not machine. Not paying attention. Not, yeah, just, just, move it. just moving through it. Like, just, oh, we're going to build some muscle. It's like, dude, th- this kid needs to be regressed all the way to the point where we're talking right now. And you could literally change his life. Yeah, literally changed this kid's life, especially at seventeen. That's years. why it's a gift, man. I yeah, can't stress that it enough. Is. Like, it is. It is. It's gonna transform like uh, right in front of you. But 100%. kudos for you for reaching out and trying to solve it, and not just doing the easy thing, which would have been to just default to machines and not really help this kid at all. All right, I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out. Thirty percent body fat for men. This is way too high. This is actually a bit high for women as well. So in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from thirty to ten. What is ten percent body fat? This is when you have a visible six pack. Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible, but not if you guess along the way. So we're gonna talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now there's a huge range, right? Of like body types. Yes. Some people can run uh, a little bit heavier uh, and, or a little bit higher body.